In some cultures, males must be circumcised shortly after birth, during childhood, or around puberty as part of a rite of passage. Circumcision is commonly practiced in Jewish, Christian, and Islamic faith. Certain African cultural groups here in Ghana and among the Yoruba and Igbo of Nigeria customarily circumcise their infant sons. For some of these groups, circumcision appears to be purely cultural, done with no particular religious significance or intention to distinguish members of a group. For others, circumcision might be done for purification. Among these groups, even when circumcision is done for reasons of tradition, it is often done in hospitals. Lately, there has been a disturbing trend with circumcision badly done in hospitals. In Ghana these days, there is an increasing rate of penal amputation cases being reported especially at the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi. Circumcisions done badly will be a focus this week. I will be telling you about how some doctors, nurses, and traditional surgeons or wanzams are mistakenly cutting off some and at times the entire penis of male babies during circumcision. I'm Dr. Kofi Ose Ekuakunde, head of sociology and social work department of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. If we trace it from the days of Abraham, you know, that is from the Bible, you know, uh, this was instituted by uh, God when he called Abraham. You know, to qualify to be a member of the Abrahamic dynasty, one has to be circumcised. And this has pervaded into our lives up to today. My name is Dr. Adair Hinapia. I'm a urologist at Comfort Teaching Hospital. In childhood, it prevents urinary tract infections. Okay. Uh, in adulthood, it has been associated with reduced HIV transmission. Yeah, and then it also kind of protects the man against penile cancer in the long term. And so it, it seems to have medical benefits. Socially, in Ghana, you know how people perceive people that are not circumcised. Those who were not circumcised were considered to be unclean. That is why even today, if you associate with somebody who has not been circumcised, you know, society, I mean, it chastises you. People will not even understand why a woman should sleep with somebody who is um, not circumcised. People believe that those who are not been circumcised you know, uh, could not uh, give birth. Uh, 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 that is, could not produce. Because um, if you look at it carefully, you realize that uh, there's a belief that the sperms cannot you know, penetrate. Because that, thing, that uh, foreskin encloses it and will block the sperm from moving into the ovary of the woman. You don't need to be circumcised to be able to give birth. And you don't need to be circumcised to be a man. There are certain areas that chiefs are still forbidden where you are found to be touched by the knife or you know, there's a cut. You are disqualified from becoming a traditional ruler because, I mean, they think that you know, something has happened to you. I remember there are some chiefs uh, during the contest who managed to get something to cover, you know, uh, the penis so as to portray uh, some uh, evidence of uh, non-circumcision. There is a long-running and vigorous debate over ethical concerns regarding circumcision, particularly neonatal circumcision for reasons other than the expected direct medical benefit. There are three parties involved in the decision to circumcise a male child. The male child as the patient, the parents or guardians, and the doctor. The doctor is bound under ethical principles of promoting well-being and so is charged with the responsibility to promote the best interest of the patient while minimizing unnecessary harms. 
The parents must therefore weigh the factors of what is in the best interest of the child against the potential harms of the procedure because a newborn baby boy cannot make the decision over what is in his best interest. It has become an issue now because of the many penal amputations innocent boys yet to have a feel of this world have started facing. Dr. George Amua of the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital Urology Department speaks about some statistics they have recorded. Over the past 20 months, the unit has witnessed 76 cases of circumcision-related complications which needed a urologist attention. The commonest complication we see here is from uterocutaneous fistula and that accounted for 61 cases. The most tragic is the glands amputation and we've witnessed eight cases uh, in our local dialect we call it the uh, ate so glands amputation means any transaction of the penis from this region and beyond you are cutting short the length of the penis Kwame Dansu lives at Fijasi in the Ashanti region his 10-month-old son has suffered what could literally be termed as male genital mutilation. One half of his son's glance penis was cut off. After the delivery, on the ninth day, we decided to make a circumcision. So we decided to go to the right so that's hospital. And other family members were saying that, oh, uh, this one, some people can't even do it and do it right. They have observed, and that's very good. And we say that, no, I'm an educated person, I can't do such a thing. If something occurs, how am I going to explain to maybe hospital or the doctors? Maybe I'll, I'll be damned. So I decided to go to the right source. Unfortunately, the worst happened when he went to the right source. The circumcision was not done properly. The little boy bled for more than five hours until he was rushed again to the hospital for attention. The boy was only nine days old. The nurse who performed his circumcision used the plastic bell method. This is where a plastic bell is placed over the glance of the penis and the foreskin is pulled over the outside of the bell. Afterwards, the foreskin is tied with a string or tissue above the string is cut off with a pair of scissors and the handle is then snapped off. If it is done well, after five days the plastic will fall off by itself. But Kwame Damsu says that did not happen in his son's case, so they contacted the nurse again on the sixth day. We went there and the, the man looked at it and said, oh, you can even do it. You can even use your this thing, scissors at home and cut it. Hey, how can I do this? He said, oh, you, you cry, you people, you fear. This is good. The left is some small part. You can, you can even use this thing and just take it out. Oh. And, uh, it went like that, and the man just called for some scissors and uh, just remove it. So after removing it, we observed that a tissue that had been cut out. I said, oh, uh, man, we have seen some drop of some tissue. I said, oh, no, it's nothing. That's normally what happens. And uh, after observing that, I'm a man. I, I know how penis look like. And I said, oh, so this how this how it has been. He said, yes. After healing, I said, no, madam, you can't lie to me. And uh, after that, the man observed that there is some bleeding coming. Then he told us to go to the hospital and see some doctors there. It was at this point that these doctors saw how badly it had gone and referred the case of little Emmanuel to the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital. The barely two-week-old baby was saved by the bell. Others who bled this way died. The fact still remains that those who are circumcised are not ill. And so while there are advantages, it's a bit unfortunate if somebody gets circumcised and out of that gets a problem which he would not, not otherwise have had if he had remained all right. And that's why I'm so interested that if it's be done, it must be done well. And as much as possible, complications should be, if none at all, to be the barest minimum. Bro, 
crowds of people are walking down the streets here at Abuabo as the sounds of old smoky motorbikes drive through the narrow lanes in this nose-to-tail traffic jam on the street. Abuabo is one of Kumasi's Muslim populated areas. Sule Mohammed, as I have named him for purposes of this documentary, lives here. Sule is four years old. He lives with his parents and he is also a victim of what I have termed male genital mutilation. Sule has also lost almost half of his penis. His mother, Fatih Mohammed, says this happened at Tumu in the Upper East region when Sule was only two months old. She took the baby there for a funeral. Her sister-in-law realized Sule was not circumcised then, so she took the baby to the nearest hospital to be circumcised. They later noticed the glance penis had been amputated. Mm -hmm. It had been bandaged when he was brought from the hospital. It was after the wound healed and the bandage was removed that I saw that his gland penis had been amputated. The penis had become shorter, but it could erect all right and also pass urine. It then occurred to me to rush him to the Konfanochi teaching hospital where doctors there told me they will operate on him. He has been accusing me of being the cause of his amputated penis. Sule is only four years old, but he has realized there is something wrong with his manhood. He finds it difficult playing with his peers because when he has to urinate whilst playing, they see it and mock him. At least Sule is grateful to God that he is able to pass urine without sweat. Urologist Dr. George Amwa explains there are others who cannot urinate after this kind of amputation. When the penis is transected, it heals with what we call fibrous tissue meaning there's scarring, scarring. And then the meatus, where we urinate, where the urine passes, because of the fibrosis, contracts and narrows, sometimes even closing up completely. And when this happens, this child would have to strain, pushing in a lot of effort to make to it. And by so doing, urine refluxes. Urine refluxes into the upper tracts, refluxes into the ureter, and then into the renal pelvis and into the kidney. The reflex means the urine goes back. And because, be, because this event happens and he has to strain, there is always, always stasis of urine, some unrequired amount of urine in the bladder, and it gets infected because urine has been stagnated. It gets infected and he develops what we call UTI. So if this urine that is infected refluxes into the kidney, there is injury to the kidney and these children will end up having hypertension and consequently renal failure. Some of these babies suffered total amputation of the entire penis two days after birth. Dr. Kweku Adai Ahinapia tells me about some fortunate babies who have had their glance penis and the entire manhood intact and others who developed another opening underneath their penis during circumcision. This made them pass urine from two outlets. This hole can come in the form of a pin hole. This is a very tiny hole here to a very big defect on the underside of the, of the penis. And this tells you the different sizes of the retrocutaneous fistula that you have been seeing. Some are very tiny, small ones, medium size, big differs to almost a uh, very huge differs the underside of the penis uh -huh. and this is usually where you try to catch the bleeding vessels so as you try to catch the vessels it will take too much bite and strangulate kind of strangulate the the vessels so that the whole area which is supplied by the vessel becomes necrotic and when it heals you have this big defect. Seventeen-month-old boy Prince Yangson has this kind of opening beneath his penis. 
his parents never realized that an opening had been created when he was circumcised a week after his birth. His mother, Priscilla Yangson, however, decided to seek medical counsel when she realized her son's penis was not growing. It looked too small. So I once went to one hospital when the female, it was a female doctor who said he's fat. As he grows, it will come out. Then on the second thought, a friend told me I, I, should, I shouldn't take what the lady is saying. So she directed me to one doctor. And then the doctor said it was hyper something. And then he referred me to the hospital. Precisely, Confanoche. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. So when I got there, then the doctor who examined the boy said... He got the to a point the boy could no more avoid perirethra because the, the, the hole had become like a, a pinhole. This was a 11-year-old boy who had not been circumcised and was walking about. He heard that the wanzam had come to his area. He rushed to go and have himself circumcised without even the parents' consent. And this is how he ended up. The whole glance was chopped off. This boy was also uh, circumcised by a wanzam. And as you can see, almost the whole penis is gone, leaving a small stump a very short penis stamp at the base, as you can see, it's almost at the level of the scrotum. I gave up halfway through the pile of photos. A botched circumcision operation can leave the victim paralyzed for life and the inability to have sex. For an operation that is seen as medically unnecessary, that is indeed a very high price to pay. It is possible that even the most experienced one Sam or doctor can miss the path of his or her knife and cut some vital veins that would seriously affect a child. This one, the way the boy has caused me and given a birth at this in a boy again. Where am I? This is the problem. Where am I sending the child to to be circumcised? Then next time maybe I'll go to one Sam. And if you go to one Sam too, there's a problem. I'll go to proper train or a sector and there too there's a problem. So where should I go? So now that's my question. In some cases, the way wound is dressed in an attempt to stop the babies from bleeding after a successful circumcision can actually lead to the amputation of the penis. Most of the time, one of the main complications of circumcision, immediate complication is bleeding. Some of the bleedings are difficult to control. So in inexperienced hands, what they do is to tie, use a, 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 a suture or the, a, a thread to tie the middle part of the penis or even the base of the penis. The blood is from the base to the end. So if we're able to tie the middle portion, the bleeding will stop actually. But the question is, when should that tie remain? Sometimes people don't know that after time, maybe within the first 20 to 30 minutes, you release what? The tie. So these ties, are, they, keep, they, they are kept there for hours. So after the removal of these ties, the portion which is beyond where the tie was will now start to look black and darker. It means that there's what we call gangrene. That portion of the penis is dead. And after some few days, you see that that portion will, will just fall off. And then you see a very short penis. And when the bleeding continues at the hands of these inexperienced doctors and wanzams, some of these children end up losing their lives. This happens especially to babies with hemophilia, which is a medical condition in which the ability of the blood to clot is drastically reduced, causing the sufferer to bleed severely from the slightest injury. Dr. Lawrence Oseitutu, a pediatrician with special interest in pediatric blood disorders at the Confonochi Teaching Hospital, says it is for this reason that they advocate that circumcisions are done in medical facilities. For those who come in very bad, one reason may be, yes, they are far away from the emergency. The other reason may be they thought it was normal. I mean, there are communities where people think it's normal, for instance, for boys to have uh, bloody urine. 
you may be surprised to know that a community may think that if they circumcise, they don't bleed that much, that the circumcision didn't go well. You see, all this is lack of knowledge, you see. So for the person to have the awareness that it is bad for you to bleed from a cord, cut, or a circumcision, that is also one point. And then, once that awareness is there, then they will report with you to the hospital. You understand that? But generally, the closer you are to an emergency service, the better for you. So if you do the circumcision within a hospital, even if you do not know your family history, that your maternal uncle or something had a problem like that, and once they do the cutting within the hospital and there's a problem, of course, there's a chance for you to, to receive blood and so forth and be investigated, and then we find out the problem. When anyone has a baby, the first question everyone asks is, is it a boy or a girl? And in Ghana, as in many African cultures, if it's a boy, he would usually be circumcised on the seventh day after birth. This is supposed to be a simple procedure. However, some parents and their innocent children occasionally suffer the heartbreaking trauma of having the penises of their newborns mutilated by doctors or wanzams. Unfortunately, many of such cases are left unreported. Doctors are worried about the psychological effect this is having on the 76 children and the many others whose plights have not been reported yet. It affects their marital life in future. And even as kids, whilst in school, if, it's, if this child pulls out a penis to mitrate and is seen by his colleagues, or, yeah, to urinate, and he's seen by his colleagues, I mean, they would gonna make teasing, and if care is not taken, this child can be withdrawn and might not even complete his education. Penal amputation might not necessarily render you impotent. You might be potent enough, but your sensation, it's cut off. The glance penis is the most sensitive part of the penis. So though potent-wise, you'll be able to erect, depending on how much the erection chamber, how much the erection chamber is left when it's amputated. But obviously, it adversely affects your sexual activity. And in addition to the aesthetic complications, the penis, it's shortened. And for some degree of shortening, you might not be able to have coitus, sexual intercourse. Because obviously, if your penis is just 0.5 of a centimeter, you cannot have sexual intercourse. If we allow things to go as it is now, I think more and more people are going to be consigned into perpetual uh, psychological defects in the future. If you see some of these pictures and a baby is supposed to grow up with this, in the future, if he doesn't become an alcoholic, he becomes suicidal. Doctors are worried about this, and more so parents like Kwame Danso and Priscilla Yangsen, whose kids are the victims. In our society, uh, we know schooling, boarding houses. If the child goes to boarding house and people see, it's not common. Psychologically, I have the pictures since. I've been snapping the pictures and I have a lock on it so that nobody gets access to it. I have to observe to see how it's going. My problem was to society, psychologically, emotionally. How is he going to feel if he sees uh, the way people's uh, penis look like? He'll be having so many questions in his mind. Why am I having this? I'm not even comfortable. Always, I always complain to my, 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 my mom. Hey, yeah, now I see a day. I'm not comfortable. Not at all. I'm not comfortable until I get a solution to the crack. It, it looks as if the penis is not being able to come out as a normal pen. Yeah. So maybe until everything is done, that, that will make me become a little bit calm. These unfortunate preventable accidents have depleted the accounts. They have vowed to use all they have to ensure that it is corrected. Now I can say I have nothing. I have nothing. Because I spend day and night. 
And after this, thing, because of that problem, it has bring about some sicknesses here and there. Because the medicine that we are giving to the child, some are powerful. And looking at a child who is not up to even uh, one year, look at the severe and the pain. Even the pain itself is making the child even not growing as expectation. So I had a sleepless night since. I've been having a sleepless night since and looking at financial problem in here and there, question. And it can happen that today it will run. The next day when you go, they will ask you to go and buy this. Come to this day, can go here and there. Even the reason before the surgery, we went for lab labs. The lab even cost us about 250 Ghana cities. The lab before even the labs are alone. And it's not monthly, it's maybe weak. A 2010 study published in Thymos, Journal of Boyhood Studies, estimates that more than 100 baby boys die from circumcision complications each year in the United States of America, which means that more boys die from circumcision than suffocation and car accidents. Doctors say if you are able to run faster with the amputated part to the hospital within six hours after it happened, it can't be fixed. I'm Dr. Roland Azonieres, a urologist in the Department of Surgery of Confirmatory Teaching Hospital. Those who come with uh, amputated penis and they are presenting late, obviously we don't have the distal one, the portion that is chopped for them for them to reattach it. Now the challenge is for us to one, try to lengthen the remaining penis and also try to uh, fashion out a new glands. We try to mimic, we try to something to mimic the, the, the gland. So to achieve length, there are so many uh, procedures, so many maneuvers that we do. The good thing about the penis is the great length is also hidden under the, uh, the, 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 the pubic bone. So in situations like this, we try to borrow length from under the, the bone. In an attempt to simulate the gland, we sometimes have to go to the mouth. Uh, somebody will be asking, ah, what's the relationship between the mouth and the penis? Yeah, we go to the mouth and take the, the inner lining of the mouth, we call the baka mucosa. And uh, we have to take a portion of it as a graft and uh, bring it to the, the end of the penis. Even with these maneuvers, the truth remains that the penis will lose its sensation after the surgery. No other part of the penis gives sensation as much as the, the glands. It is why the good feeling of sex is fair. So if this is taken out, it's just like uh, what we say about the female genital uh, uh, mutilation, they take out their clitoris. The clitoris is actually equivalent to the penis in female. So if you are taking out the half or a whole penis out, it means you are also taking out the, uh, uh, the, the, the sensitive part of the penis. So if the gland is taken out, we cannot fashion out anything that will have that equal sensation. Where I did it, it was done by anesthetist. I don't know whether the anesthetists are being trained for that or the doctors are supposed to take over that um, aspect of uh, the circumcision. In the past when we even had the wanzam, we were not having these cases. You know, I, I, I had my, uh, I think the wanzam was so per perfect and uh, it looks good. Studies have revealed that urinary tract infections are more common in uncircumcised infants than in circumcised infants, with 95% of all infections occurring in uncircumcised infants. The risk of urinary tract infection in the uncircumcised infant has been found to be the greatest in infants less than one year old, which makes infant circumcision a reasonable choice. Studies have revealed that uncircumcised infants have a tenfold risk of contracting urinary tract infection than circumcised infants. Dr. Kofi Ose Ekwokon, Head of Sociology and Social Work Department of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, is still struggling to understand why these preventable accidents are happening, especially in our hospitals. He says it is a clear departure from the past where many adults in the country were circumcised by traditional surgeons known in local parlance as wanzams without such reports. Yeah, if, if you read a, a certain book called Growing Up in Dabon, you know, you realize that traditional people took to the trade of their fathers or their parents. 
So when th there is a wanzam in the family, and it becomes a treat for the people in the family, and they are trained, you know, to do it perfectly. And indeed, you must qualify as a, co a competent wanzam before you are released to perform such duties. So I set out looking for some of these traditional surgeons or wanzams to find out how good they are in circumcising. Fortunately, I chanced upon a 42-year-old Isahak Zakaria at Alaba, a suburb of Kumase. Isahak comes from Kumbugu in the northern region of Ghana, but for years he's made Kumase his second home. He is a professional tailor, but he abandoned that job and about 20 years ago has been circumcising children. Isahak learned this from his grandfather, who was the chief of all the traditional surgeons or wanzams in his hometown. But he says some rituals must be performed before one is allowed to undertake the circumcision procedure. <laughs> You can't just get up and start using the knife to circumcise. It's a scale for the family, so you have to undergo some rituals and get properly initiated. The family will get you the knife and all other instruments you need. You are then taken to a special place where they will pray to God and the ancestors. In my case, after the prayers, they handed the knife to my mother and she passed it on to me. It is normally the father of the newborn baby who officially invites the one Sam to the child's naming ceremony to perform the duties required of him. If the baby is seen to be healthy and of normal birth weight, the one Sam circumcises him. But if it is found that the baby is unwell and underweight, the one Sam postpones the circumcision until the baby has gained enough weight. Isahak is surrounded by a number of local surgical instruments, including a number of knives, silver bowl, grinded herbs, and a stone and an instrument he uses to sharpen his knives on. Isahak says they do an analysis on the anatomy of the penis before they start the circumcision. <laughs> You first have to hold the penis in such a way that you'll be able to determine its length. The glance penis is hidden in something like a sack, so it's difficult to determine where it lies in the sack. So when you hold the penis, then you'll be able to determine where the glance is. Then you hold the tip of the penis and pull the skin and cut from there. The major challenge facing wanzams during circumcision is when they cut across certain veins under the penis, which leads to profuse bleeding. When this happens, the wanzam has to hold the newly circumcised penis and blow some air into it to stop the bleeding. If this does not stop the bleeding altogether, a local herb and some melted shea butter is applied to the wound and then it's bandaged. Before the bandage is removed, the melted shea butter is once again applied on the bandage to soften it before it can be removed. Doctors say the way the skin is pulled and cut is what results in the amputation. Dr. Adaya says doctors who perform circumcision also go through training. For anybody who comes, you train, you, you observe the surgeon perform the circumcision. The surgeon will assist you to perform one and then you are observed to perform one on your own. And then you know that you have received formal training. Some may just have seen people do it and they go on to go and perform it, thinking that they know how to do it. But seeing and doing are different things. Doctors say circumcision is a surgical procedure and so all the preparations and considerations that go into surgery must be respected and followed. I am at the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital where a baby is scheduled to be circumcised and I am told to prepare to witness how a proper circumcision is done. I am handed a theater scrub together with gloves and nose and mouth cover.
Their one-week-old baby has already been prepared for the circumcision. He has been put to sleep to allow the doctors do it without any difficulties. And Dr. Adeya Hen will lead the over 10-member team to undertake this surgery. Set. This is what you call the foreskin or the prepuce. And that's what we usually cut off during circumcision. This is a surgical operation. You need anesthesia. So what you are going to do is to block the pinna nerve. And there's a gap between the base of the penis and the bone. That's where you target the pinna nerve and you block it. So after the, you block the pinna nerve, you do a circumferential block. The most commonest method is what you call the amputation method where they just grab the tip of the penis and push it down and push and push it down and then they will grab the tip here okay and then they cut now when you are cutting you don't see and so you can easily cut the tip of the penis off. And that is what has resulted in many of the pina amputations that I showed you. It's better you do what you call the dorsal slit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you see the penis as you just slit. You slit the, you slit the foreskin on the dorsal aspect. Okay. And then you see this is the glance penis. Mm -hmm. Can you see the glands? Here. Yeah. Okay. Then you free the ventral part very well from the foreskin, and then you 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 open it up. Okay. Now, when you do this, you can just see the glands penis. You can see the glands. Free it from the the prepuce or the foreskin. It took Dr. Adair Hain and his team just about 20 minutes to finish this procedure. Another way of doing this is to use the plastic bell method. This is where a plastic bell is placed over the glands of the penis and the foreskin is pulled over the outside of the bell, after which the foreskin is tied with a string. All tissue above the string is cut off with a pair of scissors and the handle is then snapped off. The two processes appear very easy and straightforward, yet someone's arms and doctors are getting it wrong. The future of some innocent children is being put at risk here and for some reasons, some parents whose children have suffered this are reluctant to take any action. For Ghana, if you should take a matter like this up, then, hey, what you mean, mean, what you who, who, being a female, being a woman in our society, you can't just come out and then say things. And then, even if you come out like this, it may be like you are even in a way disgracing or bringing the child out for public to be to radical about. In Ghana, um, I think that the social structure is having a negative toll on our lives. You know, the fact that we don't want to appear like creating problems for other people, you know, we keep these things to ourselves. You know, for example, this is happening in the hospitals. Not many people have heard about this. And I was surprised. Because if these things happen and we keep them to ourselves, how can we solve them? So there's the need for us to uh, get uh, uh, the stakeholders in the form of a crusade, you know, to... Uh, prompt government you know, to t take a serious uh, uh, view about this. And this is exactly what especially urologists at the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital are pushing. Dr. Adai Ahin says a way out to solving these amputations is retraining local surgeons and even health practitioners who undertake circumcision. Possible. Anybody who, who, who is involved in circumcision must be certified. By that, by that we mean that you should have gone through a certain training program and, be, uh, and your trainers must be satisfied that uh, 
uh, you are capable, you are not harmful to the general population. The Ministry of Health, I think, should come in at this point to help us. They can facilitate this training program we are talking about by bringing people from the districts, the regions to come for training. They will then become trainer of trainers for their localities. And then we will, by one year time, hopefully, everybody who is involved in this circumcision process would have been trained. Dr. Apio Dumensa at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital says this can be done. He started this training at the hospital some years ago. In fact, the idea initially was to help those who are already circumcising to be safe for the children. Yes, invited them together, made a curriculum for them, and began to train them in the various problems that they could face, the conditions they should avoid. Because there are actually some conditions where circumcision becomes um, a sort of a deterrent, I mean, sort of disturbs them, like I have a condition called hypospadias where a child is born with the orifice, the hole forming the urine, being under rather than at the tip. And such children need every piece of skin they have for the corrective surgery. Mm -hmm. So if you circumcise such children, then you make things a bit difficult for the child and of course for the surgeon who must operate later to correct these things. So we thought if we could let these people know, then we could reduce the risk of the problems and have these people sent to us. The other thing was I recognized that if we create a link with them, then when they had problems, they could call upon us and send patients to us so that patients don't have to be there and have problems and keep hanging on, but we could see them and we could manage them effectively as soon as possible. Circumcision is a surgical procedure that should be performed by surgeons under sterile conditions at a health center. But in a country where availability of health care facilities and professionals is still a big problem, many parents would have to rely on traditional surgeons to circumcise their children. Perhaps it's time for an aggressive campaign by Ghana's health ministry to train both professional and traditional health surgeons on best circumcision practices to save little boys from these life-transforming injuries. I am Seth Kwame Boatin.